I'm Dan Drake. This is Front Up on Visitor Network TV. And with us today is Josh Posner, the uh, spokesperson, if not the head, of the uh, Wisconsin Beach Preservation Fund. Josh, welcome. So thanks for having me. I thought it was time we got an update uh, because a few things have happened in the last six weeks or so um, where with the Conservation Commission and so forth. As I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, they've basically now issued an order which says you have to remove the geotubes which have been placed along the base of the bluff. Is that correct? Well, um, they turned down the uh, notice of intent application mm -hmm. to that, that was intended to just permit what has been installed. Mm -hmm. um, but the effect of it is what I suggested, is it not? Uh, it's actually a little unclear what the effect mm -hmm. of it is. Right. Um, but you've uh, appealed it. We have appealed that denial mm -hmm. um, on the basis that the uh, standard that exists as to whether that application should be approved or not, that we met that standard. Mm -hmm. And that, um, uh, uh, therefore, that the Conservation Commission's decision to deny should be overridden. I've talked to a couple of members of the Conservation Commission off the record. They would not be interviewed. Um, and one of them told me that one of the concerns was that the town wasn't on board anymore with the program, if you will, which had been for the last six or eight months a joint effort between the town and, and the Wisconsin Beach Preservation Fund, in, in essence. Uh, do you have any inkling of that? Well, look, we know that there's a, uh, uh, a split opinion mm -hmm. on this question inside Nantucket. Um, we have been winning votes at the Board of Selectmen three to two. Uh, we have had the support of the town through the whole notice of intent application process. Um, so I think the town, in that sense, is still on board. We still have a uh, license from the town. We mm -hmm. still have a memorandum of understanding with the town. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it certainly is something that um, there's differences of opinion on the island. Not everybody agrees on, with everything. Oh, that, that's, that's for sure. Uh, but, um, so, who are you make, doing the appeal to? The Department of Environmental Protection? Yeah, the appeal um, actually has two there's, two, there's two parts to the appeal, mm -hmm. but the first part goes to the State Department of Environmental Protection. So the second part of the appeal process relates to the town of Nantucket's bylaw relating to wetland regulation, mm -hmm. which tracks the states in, in most respects, but has some differences. And uh, the Conservation Commission is responsible for enforcing both laws, if you will. And so that appeal goes to the Superior Court. But generally speaking, the uh, Department of Environmental Pr Protection state portion of it will be heard first. When do you anticipate hearing? Uh, it's a little unclear, but you know, not that long. Mm -hmm. uh, 30 to 60 days, we believe, uh, it will get re reviewed. And, do you get uh, a chance to argue it in front of the? Yeah, the, 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 uh, the step that happens is that the uh, DEP officials actually come to Nantucket mm -hmm. and people on all sides of the question are heard. It's, um, it's, it's not like a courtroom proceeding, it's, it's uh, something where it's kind of in the field mm -hmm. and they listen to different people's views. Um, obviously, one, probably the major reason for opposing the um, the installation of the geotubes and the whole process that you've been through in the, in, in the fall and winter uh, was the issue of scouring, um, of it impacting other neighbors to the north or the south who don't have protected uh, shorelines. It's, it, I know it hasn't been all that long, but has there been any indication that that kind of thing is happening to date? Uh, no, there, there hasn't. And, you know, a, a lot of people who have been uh, interested in this are certain mm -hmm. that the geotubes will function like a seawall and will cause scour 
in front of the system mm -hmm. and will cause the uh, loss of the beach in front mm -hmm. of the geotubes and will also cause uh, so-called end scour where the system ends and right. the unprotected area begins. And we agree that that would happen if we were not adding a large amount of sand on mm -hmm. top of the whole system. Um, it was very interesting. Uh, uh, a few months ago, the, um, a number of the organizations sponsored some outside experts who came and gave right. a speech, Corey Dean and mm -hmm. Robert Young. And their presentation was fascinating. I know, unfortunately I didn't get to it, so. Uh, to me, you know, I'm sure that different mm -hmm. people would hear different things from the same, mm -hmm. from the same presentation, and so I don't mean to put words in anybody else's mouth. But the big issue that Robert Young was talking about was how it's very important for people to understand that when they put in a system such as we've done, that you need to add sand on an ongoing, regular basis. Mm -hmm. We're unaware of any other project similar to what we're doing that is adding the kind of sand that we add. Um, when that sand is added, it's a completely different situation in terms of scour. Mm -hmm. No sand, you can expect to lose the beach and you can expect some scour. But with the sand, it's sort of a mini beach nourishment situation where the, uh, uh, the ends and the front are continually replenished. And it really, uh, if you go out and look now, you, you have a hard time understanding why there would be scour. So we think we're being compared to a different system than what we've, mm -hmm. put, what we've put in and being criticized as if we weren't putting in any sand. And you've put, well, what was the number of truckloads that went in in the first go round? It's a, it's a, it's a huge amount of, mm -hmm. of sand. We have promised to put in um, 20 cubic yards, which is about a truckload of sand mm -hmm. for every linear foot. So for 900 feet, that's 900 truckloads per year. Mm -hmm. Where's that sand year. coming from? Well, it's coming from two different island pits right now. And uh, the sand is evaluated to see mm -hmm. if it's similar grain size mm -hmm. as what's there on the, on the beach. Um, so we put in that amount of sand when we installed the project mm -hmm. and then... I thought it was more like double that initially. Uh, we put in more than that initially because a lot of it went inside the geotubes mm. and some of it went behind the geotubes and that doesn't count right. as the sand that's on top and available to Mother okay. Nature yeah, to, watch, to wash away. And then our sand year, if you will, is uh, from F April 1st until the next March 31st. When you're, when you're committed to putting So in. So we're into the next year and we've delivered a third of this uh, New Year's mm -hmm. worth of sand. We delivered that right after the uh, big 98 mile an hour wind uh, mm -hmm. northeaster yeah. at the end of March on March right. 27th. So we, we actually lost some of the sand in front of the system mm -hmm. as was expected, as it's designed to do. Um, so we've now got a supply of sand that's probably enough to get us through two or three more storms like that. So we don't, we don't think we'll need to supply any more until the fall. Um, what do you think about when you hear about a storm coming, such as Arthur potentially? What, what, what are you looking for uh, as, as uh, a storm like that might pass by fairly close to Nantucket? Well, the, uh, the big issues for, for, for us is um, our, uh, we have three layers of geotubes. Mm -hmm. The, geolo the uh, uh, coastal engineers designed the system so that it should have four. And so in our effort to compromise with the town and come up with something that everybody could live with, we did not install the top layer. Mm -hmm. So if Arthur is a 100 year storm that which happens- Which is unlikely. Which is unlikely. And if it happens during a, uh, uh, you know, when the tide is, when it, when it, when it peaks, mm -hmm. when tide is high and when the moon is full, um, uh, we will really need that fourth tier. And so I worry about making sure that that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. In most cases, the three tiers that are there should be enough to protect that area. Uh, I worry about the area that's not protected because we've protected about 900 feet and we want to protect about 4,000 feet. So we've got... In both directions? A little bit more in the direction toward the lighthouse, mm -hmm. mostly south to where erosion has 
advanced, which is about halfway down Baxter Road at this mm -hmm. point to about 63 Baxter Road. So our system goes just to uh, uh, 87, I think. One of the things that Islanders are concerned about, as at least they've told me, is, is the amount of sand that is going into that project and would go into it if it were expanded. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what's that going yeah. to do to that? Well, there's a couple of issues there. I mean, one of them is, is there enough sand? Are right. we going to run out of sand? And, um, uh, you know, it's going to take a long time for Nantucket, which is made out of sand, to run out of sand. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but there are a lot of people who aren't, aren't going to want you digging in their backyards. <laughs> true, true, true. But, you know, we have, I think, something like, you know, 20 years of sand in the existing mm -hmm. pits. So mm -hmm. I think that that covers us for a while. Um, we're interested in looking at other ways of getting sand mm -hmm. offshore that uh, would be broadly supported and not create the ruckus that happened the last mm -hmm. time we, we kind of talked about that. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about anywhere near the volumes of sand that we talked about back in 2007 with the big beach mm -hmm. nourishment right. project and which other beach nourishment projects do. So I think we can manage the sand, the, the, the trucks you know, are certainly somewhat disruptive, but we're able to keep them off season. Uh, this last round, for example, where we delivered 300 truckloads, mm -hmm. we delivered them in two full days and two half days. Um, you know, so it's, it has an effect, but it's something that I think on balance is mm -hmm. worth doing. If you're successful with the appeal to the DEP, um, will you apply to for the full project, or will you get, continue to do it in pieces? Well, we're, we're looking for an opportunity to apply for the full project, as we discussed mm -hmm. you know, from the very beginning, and that's what's outlined in the Memorandum of mm -hmm. Understanding with the town. So we haven't made any secret about mm -hmm. the desire. The reason we did the smaller project was because at the end of last summer, when our uh, revetment, our stone revetment proposal was kind of getting bogged down mm -hmm. at, the, at the Conservation Commission, we realized that if we didn't do something, the, the most vulnerable part of Baxter Road would really be vulnerable through mm -hmm. the storm season. And mm -hmm. so that's where we came up with this shorter mm -hmm. uh, version uh, with the town. Uh, we were talking before we started taping about various impacts on the bluff, not just wave action, but it'd be interesting to hear you talk about the wetland situation and so forth. And one of the things I raised was the question of whether the irrigation of lawns is an issue mm -hmm. um, on, on the bluff. And uh, there may be other things that impact the, the erodibility, if you will, of, of the bluff. Do you want mm -hmm. to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's our view, and I think that it's, it's very clear if you look at it, that almost the entire... Uh, driving force is the wave action at the toe of the bluff, which undermines the, the, the bluff, mm -hmm. causes the area above it to slide down, and that's what eats away at the vegetation, eventually ends up with, with pretty much of a uh, sheer sand cliff. Mm -hmm. Now, once, it's ex once the, the bluff is exposed like that and there's no more vegetation, there's a fair amount of erosion that comes from uh, water um, on the face of the bluff mm -hmm. uh, or water running off the top of the bluff, uh, particularly in unvegetated areas where it runs off fast mm -hmm. from uh, the road runoff. There, there's some locations. Um, there, is a situ there, there are a few other situations that are uh, possibly relevant. One of them is a wetland that is on the western side of Baxter Road mm -hmm. and that seeps out along some clay lenses that can be anywhere from 8 to 15 feet below the surface level. And so when the water hits that in a big storm, it'll come out. And, and with the erosion, it breaks out through the face of the bluff in a couple mm -hmm. of places. So that's a concern. I know some people have said, you know, general irrigation adds to it as well. You know, we haven't found that to be mm -hmm. the case. We think that, that that's pretty irrelevant. Is there anything else that is sort of uh, impacting it in terms of the? I, I really think that the you know almost yeah. all of it is the waves come in, they eat away at the toe, they undermine the area above, mm -hmm. and it slides down in chunks. 
So we have an average rate of uh, loss of you know maybe three or four or five depending on the year and the specific location feet per year, but it goes usually in terms of nothing, nothing, thirty feet right. in a chunk, and so it, it doesn't go nice and smooth. <laughs> One of the things that's been discussed is uh, is, re is vegetating the face of the cliff. Is that really feasible? Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> if you if if you look at, first of all, it's, it's been done in places above where we have jute terraces. I mean, one of, the, one of the big issues is the Conservation Commission, some of them anyways, have said, why can't you just use the jute terraces? Mm -hmm. And we do have jute terraces in some locations that uh, individual homeowners have been putting in, and in some places have vegetated above with beach grass, and it's very dense, mm -hmm. and it works great until a big enough storm comes to take away the jute mm -hmm. underneath, and then the whole thing slides again. But it, but but we've we've got places where they've been. It's been revegetated, and it's very strong, and it clearly stops the face-oriented wind and water erosion in the places where it's there. And there's plenty of places where the erosion has not advanced farther south on the bluff towards mm -hmm. Sconset that are very steep, but they, they are. are that are woody. Bayberry, Scotch broom, Ragosa, mm -hmm. on on areas that are just as steep as the steep areas but, uh, now. But that's stuff that's that's volunteered, if you will, to to grow there. It's not been planted, right? Uh, for the no, most part, no. I mean, that's stuff that's been there for you know right. 100, 200 years, right. or maybe longer. Mm -hmm. You know, there was some point in time when erosion was here since the ice age formed Nantucket. Right where that was all bare, and then, yes, it, it kind of grew back up. But, I mean, the idea of, of manual planting of vegetation. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, take a look at yeah. the places where it's been manually planted. Mm -hmm. and, and does it go all the way up to the top? It goes all the way up to the top. Mm -hmm. And it goes on very, very steep area. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it looks a lot steeper than, I mean, it's about a 45-degree angle, mm -hmm. which is very steep when you look at it. Right. it. It doesn't sound as steep as it actually looks. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be up there planting stuff, I'll tell you. <laughs> Josh Posner from the Wisconsin Beach Preservation Fund, thank you, and good luck with your efforts. Thanks, Dan.